Whiskey 3 Golf Tango Radio. Whiskey 3 Golf Tango Radio. Go ahead, sir. Ah, good afternoon there. I was listening to you and Charles up there in New Hampshire. Uh, I'm down here in Maryland by Annapolis. The name here is Scott. Uh, Charles was about 10 or 20 over here in Maryland, and you're doing about the same, so I'm hearing you both very good today. I've talked to you a few times before and been recorded on your show. Uh, I've since made a few adjustments to my audio since your last uh, recording of me, so I mainly just wanted to hear a good recording of me, so I figured I would give you a call and say hello there from Maryland. Uh, Whiskey 3, Golf Tinger Romeo, back to KC9, uh, Victor, Kilo, Victor. Roger, Roger, Scott. Well, you do have uh, great audio. The uh, EQ is just right on top. I wouldn't change a thing about that. And uh, your uh, signal here is uh, at least uh, 10, 12 dB above my uh, local noise level. And your um, uh, your um, <laughs> brain lock, <laughs> your uh, uh, signal as far as fatness is uh, right on. You're running about uh, two and a half, three dB uh, dynamic range, and that's just perfect. Oh, copy that, copy that. Well, um, good, then I won't hold you too long. I just wanted a little bit of the recording, so uh, when I check your uh, YouTube channel, I could hear myself back. Um, I'm talking to you on a Yaesu DX3000 radio with a Heil 781 microphone. I'm running an Ameritron AL80B, and I'm going out to an NFED antenna. I think the last time I talked to you, I was on an inverted V. I've since switched to an NFED uh, made by a company called Maple Leaf Studios. It uh, turned out to be a pretty good antenna and beat out my other antennas, so right now we're working off of that. Roger. Now, the question is, did you leave the old one up? Well... Yes and no. I was going to raise the old one. I did some a being back and forth between the two antennas quite a bit, and the NFED beat it out, so I figured, well, let me try to get the, uh, the inverted V up a little higher. And as soon as I did, my SWRs went way off the charts, and I think it's because the legs were going to be too close to each other. They, uh, they weren't going to be a 90 degree anymore, so it actually did better lower than it did higher. But I'm going to put up another uh, NFED. Uh, probably next week or whenever this rain stops. And this one is going to be a hundred and L, and then do it in an inverted L, and the top flat top part of it will be probably about 60 feet up. So I imagine it's going to beat up this antenna too. Roger that, roger that. Well, you know, sometimes uh, height uh, to ground makes all the difference in the world. I once had a, a sloper that went up 80 foot to the top of a tree, and uh, I, um, you know, and, the, and it just uh, angled down to about 18 feet on the other end to a telephone pole, and I never, ever could get the SWR down. I did everything I knew to get that SWR down, and I could not do it. And then uh, by operator error, one time when I was uh, determined, I would, I would have these uh, fits of, uh, well, I'm going to take care of that problem. It's the one remaining antenna that I don't have flat as a razor, and I'm going to take care of it. So in one of those fits, I'm up on the roof, and I made a... <laughs> an operator error, and I did lose my high spot in the tree. I won't say exactly how that happened, but it had to do with uh, tie wraps that weren't uh, pulled tight. And uh, so I did lose my uh, my high tree position. So what I did was, uh, to, in order to keep on keeping on, I uh, had to go to the uh, second limb in that tree, which was only about 20 feet uh, above ground. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, when I did that, my SWR went to 0.01. I mean, it was just amazing. And I said, well, it's not the height that I want, but it sure is the SWR that I'm looking for, Roger. SWR that I'm looking for, Roger. Do you think it performed well for 20 feet, or being the, yes, the match was so perfect, do you think it really performed at 20 feet? I think truthfully, that uh, all this uh, HF stuff's moving moving by Skywave. And I don't think that, um, y you know, 20 feet uh, to 100 feet is going to make much much difference, actually. I really think that uh, uh, because, uh, you know, it's it's all uh, getting that uh, RF up in, the, up in the sky so it can, uh, you know, move around as opposed to, uh, you, you know, not. Roger? 
Yeah, Roger that. Um, but there is some science to you know uh, when you get at a certain uh, height off the ground, you get a mo little more directional than omnidirectional too. So um, I'm not sure how this inverted L will be. Um, I didn't really plot it out. I guess I could p plug in the numbers in the piece of software and see how it looks. But um, I'm just going to go with it and measure it. And I got an antenna analyzer. I got one of those little rig experts. I usually uh, kind of temporary hang stuff up, try it, and if the rig expert tells me it's good, then I uh, kind of cinch it all up and make it a little more permanent. Uh, that's the plan. I won't hold you up. I, you probably got other people out there who want to hear themselves. I appreciate the cue, so though, and it was nice talking to you again, and I'll look forward to uh, checking out the channel, and I uh, really do appreciate what you do out here. You really make a difference, and I uh, wanted to thank you for that. Whiskey 3, Golf Tingo Radio, we're going to say 73s to you, and you have a good day there from uh, Whiskey 3, Golf Tingo Radio to KC9 VKL on the We'll Listen to Your Final. Roger, correction call, uh, VKV. Victor, King Victor. But uh, on the antenna, I always leave my old antenna up uh, just because I want to A-B it against my new to be sure that uh, the new is better than the old. And I don't think it's necessarily something you can find out in, you know, two or three days. Uh, I, my policy is just to leave the old up and put it on a uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, <laughs> rotary selector or whatever you have to do to work them all in. And that way uh, you can, you know, the, the other thing is there's nothing better than the right antenna at the right place at the right time. So we're top talking options. So if you have the antenna that you were using, it was good enough then, and I guarantee you that uh, down the road there will be times when it will be better than uh, your new antenna. Not necessarily all the time, not necessarily even 50%. But when you have an A-B um, comparison situation sitting right there, you can uh, you know, go back and forth and uh, just prove to yourself that your new one is better than your old one. Anyway, that's that's my policy. That's why I have 38 antennas around the house. And, and the wife's beating me on the head saying, hey, get rid of some of these th things. Uh, well, And I did get rid of my 12-foot uh, 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 C-band dish. I, I did that. Gosh. Uh, took And I did that with a saber saw. <laughs> that's, that is determination. Not the, not the big uh, support. Uh, pole that that took a little doing. Matter of fact, I couldn't even get through that. Hardly had an angle iron cutter, and finally I, I worked it down to the ground and had to do a flower on the on the the uh, pipe. Just saw it down into four pieces. Take a sledgehammer, bend it out into a flower, and break it off. But anyway, so goes the world as far as antennas are concerned. This is KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon Kiso Vlog Network. If you have a radio you want to check out. Give us a shout.